Um, that's, I wouldn't say it's exactly correct, but um, that's sure, right. if one of us has to fulfill one of those roles and the other the other role, then um, <laughs> yeah, I guess that you pick the right people. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like James Comey now. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast. Oh shit, my camera's not working. This is fucking bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> nothing, nothing, nothing is working right tonight. This is uh, the Ritual Misery Podcast. This is episode 130 for Thursday, the 8th of June, 2017. Is that even right? It is right. Okay, good. This is a show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek and... Y- y- you know, Kent, how was your week while I fucking figure out this camera shit? <laughs> Holy hell, man. Ah, this, it's been a crazy two weeks, and I, I do want to welcome Squid to the show. And I also <laughs> want to publicly thank him for filling in for me last week when I was just having IRL crisis. Uh, which I'm not going to get into, but I do want to say thank you so much, Squid, for for filling in and uh, welcome back. Always, man, always. I'm just wondering why the hell would you guys choose to have me back after last week? <laughs> we we ran well, out of other options. I've only listened to about 20 to 30 minutes of that episode, so I don't know what sort of a dive that thing went down. Listen a little bit more than I did. I was actually no, I actually listened to the whole thing and I usually. I, I could not stand hearing my voice. I was like, dude, shut him up, please. Shut uh-huh. me up. And you used to be on radio, isn't that right? Yeah, uh, back in high school. Actually, uh, right after uh, Amos moved away from town, I decided, hey, I got this crazy idea. Let's go become a radio disc jockey. And then I failed at it. <laughs> <laughs> how, how long did you do that for? Oh, what, about three years, three and a half years. Oh, I, it took you three years to fail. Yeah, pretty much. Actually, <laughs> so, so, so actually, my biggest he... success was when I actually didn't try. I started working at this uh, Christian radio station and decided that I was gonna gonna play some games while I was on the air. So I'd play like the most offensive music in the studio I could while I was playing all these uh, sermons on the radio at the middle of the night. Just because I just had, I mean, imagine listening to eight hours of sermon five days a week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, b- before yeah. B- before you guys started talking again and couldn't hear me, I was saying Squid even sucks so bad at failing he couldn't fail. Right. <laughs> so there's that. Oh, man. Um, I, mean, I mean, I guess if, if you're going to fail at something, failing is the thing to fail, about, fail at. Works for me. Uh, I mean, yeah, Amos. It's so, one, of those, uh, one of those times when persistence really is the key, right? Yeah, <laughs> like, I, I haven't fucked this up yet. Let me just keep going until it until it's officially fucked. <laughs> oh man, so yeah, uh, we've been talking about podcasting and um, all of the the trials and tribulations that come with that. Um, Amos, have you have you been talking to anyone else uh, about such subject matter? Uh, no, no, I, I I haven't spoken to anybody about anything for quite a while, apparently. Um, the, <laughs> uh, I, uh, yeah, I, I restarted Undaunted and the first of the new episodes went live yesterday and I've already gotten some great feedback on it and it's been really fun. Um, I gotta tell you, dude, that show is a fucking hoot. It's, it's fun to do. I don't know how good it is to listen to because why the hell would I listen to it? I would, I host it. Um, <laughs> but overall, I mean, it, it's really fun and I really enjoy it. It's, um. <sighs> it's interesting. What, yeah, what I really love about that show, dude, is that it's a different guest every time, and it's not people that we necessarily know already. Uh, right. Like on this show, we get a lot of a lot of people from Diamond Club. We try to get uh, you know semi famous people on the show. So a lot of times, it's people that at least you and me we're familiar with them. But on Undaunted, you get people that you've never met before. I mean, of course, sometimes you get like Tom Merritt or or SP or somebody that you know. Um, but most of the time, it's people that, that you've never heard of before, and you get to experience something brand new with every episode. I think that's awesome. So one, one of the problems with it is that um, 
I, I like to go into it fresh, not really knowing a whole lot about the person. That way, when I'm asking them questions, it's, you know, it's great. Like, I, it's a genuine conversation. I'm genuinely asking the questions. The hardest ones are the ones where I know the person. Like, talking to Tom Merritt, I already know a lot of that story. So, I, I leave a lot out there un, unquestioned and unasked. Um, I did, a uh, 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 Richard Gunther was, the, I think, the last person I recorded with. And I already know a lot of it, so I had to kind of dig a little bit, another level to try to get to the stuff that I didn't know. And I think that adds to the episode, but it's it's all, uh, you know, learning inter- interview skills. And I think that's that's awesome. So it's really fun. Yeah, yeah, right on. Uh, my week has been filled with driving lessons. Um, uh, so, my, myself, so, uh, get how to drive. so, <laughs> so, so Steph is trying to learn how to drive finally. <laughs> Right. No, somebody just a little bit younger than her, uh, my teenage son, uh, he is going to be testing for his driver's license very soon. Mm. And he wants to polish up some of his skills, like parking, for example, parking in a parking lot. <laughs> uh, you know, getting the, the distance down of when you should start turning, the you know, severity at which you turn the wheel, things like that. Yeah, yeah. And um, we spend about probably, I don't know, about an hour and a half or so last night. Um, really nailing down those those skills for him, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then that's when things started to go wrong. We had, I believe, the storm of the freaking century last night in Alamogordo. Uh, we were in the Walmart parking lot, and all of a sudden there were these um, like kiddie pools on display next to the <laughs> the like secondary entrance or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Those things took flight. And became like a like a spinning tornado thing of of kiddie pools. Uh, there was a plant display that like b- just basically blew apart. Um, I was like, "All right, Luke, it's time to go. Let's go home." <laughs> and, uh, that sounds um, awesome. all hell broke loose. But what was interesting is that Luke has never, in all of his many many hours of driving, he has never driven in any sort of inclement weather whatsoever. Okay. Uh, but last night he got not only rain, but severe rain, extreme wind, hail, flooding, like everything all at once. And I, I, I took a short video of that experience. Uh, and, and now oh, you, boy. And now you're going to ask me to, uh, to play that on the computer. I obviously can't get fucking working tonight. This is going to be awesome. So let's see how this works. Um, I think I've got the audio level set. If not, then we'll adjust as we go. So plug your ears. <laughs> um, this is the video, and here we go. Uh, uh, it's, Kent, Kent, you 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 initially made the mistake of recording in portrait mode, which if just just so we're clear, if you ever Fail. record a video in portrait mode, I hope the glass in the screen bursts <laughs> out of the phone and slashes into your <laughs> eyes because it's the stupidest thing ever. Um, but you corrected it about what? two or three seconds into the video. So we're going to play from that point because I really don't feel like clawing your eyes out through Skype today. Right, right. <laughs> so he only partially failed at this? Yeah, and I forgot to clip that part out. Yeah. My bad. <laughs> yeah, here you go. Having fun, Luke? Uh, yeah, this is a fun experience. Uh, this is Luke. It's his first experience driving in inclement weather of any kind. <laughs> so there you go. You I was that. half oh. expecting you to see say cow. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, it was pretty bad. It was I think a few seconds after that actually he had to pull over and, and put the uh the emergency flashers on yeah. because it was there was no visibility at all. It sounds good to me. I mean, I, I dig it. I I I I thoroughly enjoy when uh when teenagers are dying on the roads because of hail and and rain and shit like that. And so, and so, I mean, it makes for a good movie plot. <laughs> oh man, yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was quite the experience. And uh, I'm, I'm glad, I'm kind of glad it happened because it was an amazing learning experience for, for him. So, um, and Fair we enough. made it home safely. So that's all that really matters. Yeah, well, I mean that 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 does that does make things a little bit better. Um, Sean, how was your week, dude? Like, I, I, I know your week started off weird. If we're gonna go like the past seven days worth because one week ago right now you were on on this stream with me i wouldn't i was gonna i was gonna say in the show but on this stream with me 
shooting the shit and talking to whoever wanted to call in. Um, so since yeah. s- since then, how has your week been? Dude, it's been it's been crazy. Um, over at my job, I, I they decided that they're gonna become like the Marines. You know how with the Marines that if you know anybody that's served in the Marines, they always tell you that you can always handle more more crap, more shit. Mm. And in my case, it's you get to a point where you're doing your job perfectly. Everything's going well. Everything's running smoothly. All of a sudden, your manager says, yeah, no, I, 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 we can't have that. We can't have you relaxed and doing everything the way we want. So we're going to take this other person's job and put it on you. Mm. So I get that taken care of like two days. I'm like, okay, we're cranking. We're going. We're going. All of a sudden, they go, oh, yeah, by the way, this person's job that, you know, used to work for us. Yeah, you're taking his job and two other people in two other counties position. So now you're doing a job of seven people. So I'm just like buried under so much work to where I was like, oh, can I make it here today? More more yeah, with less. In the Air Force, we call that doing more with less. Do more with less. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, we, we, the unwilling, just been... we, the unwilling, led by the unknowing, are do the, doing the impossible for the ungrateful. We've done so much with so little for so long. We are qualified to do anything with nothing. I think that's how the really fucked exactly. up version of the quote goes. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, really. um, to almost that exact point. Yeah, it's it, 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 well, we, me and Kent, and pretty much other every other maintainer that I know that's willing to speak out about it has been saying that in the Air Force and the military in general, um, we're going to continue doing more with fewer people and l- less resources until we reach the point of failure, and then we're just going to get blamed for failing. Um, exactly, and, and that's. I mean, it's still on, it's still on that trajectory. It, it, I'm surprised at how resilient um, people are, but it, it's getting there. Either regardless, um, that sounds sounds fucking horrible, and that does explain why it took you so long to log in tonight. So, um, <laughs> and I'll, I'll tell you because Sean called me earlier. Uh, he called me. We were on our way home. Now, Sean calls me a couple times a week. Usually, I can't answer because one, either I don't fucking want to, or I'm doing something <laughs> else. Um, and I'm just being honest. It's not like I'm like, oh, I don't want to talk to Sean. It's just I don't answer the phone when if I'm not in the mood to talk to somebody, I don't answer the phone. That's that's my rule. If I'm in the mood to talk to somebody, I don't care who who calls, I'll, I'll answer. But if I'm not in the in that particular mood, I'm just not going to answer. If it's my mom, if it's God, if it's Sean, I, it doesn't fucking matter. Um, uh, and Kent knows this because I've talked, to, I've texted him, said, "Dude, not in the mood to talk. What's up?" And he's like, "All right, I understand." Um. But he called me earlier, and Sean, every time you call me, it's like you're on the road. Now, earlier today, yes. I was in the mood to talk, but I also was on the road, and I did the quick math in my head, and that's going to, I mean, that phone call would have worse audio than this podcast. <laughs> you would think so. All you would hear is road nose going, burr, 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 burr. Exactly, exactly. And I was going, uh, yeah, it was. I was driving back from, from Anchorage, and there's some spots in there where the reception sometimes gets a little spotty, so... Um, anyway, uh, dude, Kent, I'm, I'm guessing you went to see Wonder Woman. Uh, yeah, dude. Uh, I'm guessing that you did not. Uh, I've left the house twice in three weeks, so no. <laughs> right. Sean, Sean, have you seen the new Wonder Woman movie? Yeah, I'm already on my third, third viewing. <laughs> oh. I had to go see it in IMAX. I had to go see it in uh, regular 3D. And then I had to go see it in 2D just so I could say, oh, yeah, I, I saw it in 2D, too. Okay. Be- oh, I'm so jealous that you have an IMAX be- theater near because- you. Oh, my gosh. Uh, but, wow, what a great movie. Like, and, that, and almost unexpected. No point because this is a DCEU movie where Man of Steel was, eh. Batman v Superman was, eh. And here we get Wonder Woman, which is, like, so far, I would say, the movie of the year for me. Well, the there's one reason for that, and there's a simple, clear, easy reason. Zack Snyder didn't direct it. <laughs> Accurate. He did have some... So I think he had a producer credit or something, but yeah, he, have, he had very little to do with this movie. And uh, But it's, it's absolutely amazing. It's beautifully shot. It's incredibly written. Um, Gal Gadot is absolutely just wonderful. Uh, of course, Chris Pine did a did a good job. He was the you know the the charming, dashing hero type, uh, but he played second fiddle to Wonder Woman, and it was it was just great. It was fantastic. 
most most people would have bowed down and most people wouldn't have been able to handle like playing that second fiddle as well as he did. He had to, he took control. He had that control for those few moments he did, but he really is just like, no, I'm following you. And he did it perfectly where you still believed like, yes, he's still a captain. He's still, you know, someone to be respected, mm-hmm. but he knows when he's in president presence of somebody greater and it was just so well done the visual visuals were perfect the there was light it wasn't just muted colors everywhere there was actually light in the dc movie recently (laughs) yeah Yeah, i read a i read a thing earlier it was like a i think somebody posted a meme it was like a uh, tumblr uh message or something like that someone said i'm i'm afraid of the or i'm afraid of what this movie is going to tell kids or something like that and somebody gave it a snarky reply of what that that women can be strong and that war is awful and he's like no 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 that that dc that we can expect more good movies from dc <laughs> <laughs> so i don't know That's i don't know awesome. we'll, we'll see I'm, I'm i'm hopeful that we get something more but i'm i'm not looking incredibly forward to justice league movie that's coming up well Actually, I might just make you look forward to it because now they have gone in and reshot. Uh, they've done a ton of pickups over just they st- scheduled a ton of pickups already just to uh, clear up all of the um, Jessica Lee stuff. And it looks like they're finally pushing Zach to decide, like everybody's been saying, it's like the only problem anybody's ever had was Zack Snyder's need to try to look broody and dark. Mm. unnecessarily that wonder woman can be someone that you can hey here's somebody that's just doing it not for some unforeseen reason just to be a hero to be a hero not Mm. to like gain all the glory it's like this is my job this is what i have to do i'm gonna go and do it yeah and you know you said that um zach snyder they're getting through to zach snyder well did you hear um about the directorial change, I guess, or at least with the post-production portion for Justice League, uh, because Zack Snyder had the the tragedy in his family, and they actually brought in Joss Whedon mm-hmm. to yeah. back clean up, basically. Any, anytime Joss yeah. Whedon's Joss involved Whedon's, in anything, uh, I'm excited. Doing all the stuff. What was that, Amos? I said anytime Joss Whedon's involved in anything, I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. So, and you know, he <laughs> he he is at least in a large part responsible for how good the at least the earlier avengers uh like phase one avengers movies were so you know maybe this is a maybe this is the best thing that can happen to dcu get I, joss whedon's input i literally have literally, no I would, fucking idea what you're talking about with phase one avengers whatever whatever <laughs> whatever you just said i have no idea but beef just said the new ghostbusters is still a piece of shit and compared to the original it'll always be a piece of shit but that's part of the art of being uh you know uh 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 first mover advantage right i think the ghostbusters movie was actually pretty good unless you compare it to the original yeah i, I haven't seen the new ghostbusters so uh i, I oh. have to reserve comment i enjoyed it actually i can't i did i didn't like the new ghostbusters only because it was almost pure one one-liner one-ups they were spending the entire time trying to prove who had the better one-ups throughout all of the ad-lib sections of it so mm. much that they actually filled most of the movie of nothing but ad libs, and mm. you you didn't see that with the first Ghostbusters. Dan Aykroyd, Bill Murray, all of them, they were just like, we are a team. We do this together. We let each other have the best lines. We don't always have to be the top dog. Whereas in the new one, it was just all about, I'm going to be the best joke teller. Oh, mm. uh, well, I... Mm. I I I completely and totally disagree with that assessment in every way I possibly can. So um, you and I probably just shouldn't see movies together. Hey, um, we were talking earlier about this new setup that I've got here. Um, I'm just going to say that this has been like, as far as my geeky thing of the week, this was it. I got a, a new mic, new mic stand and, and shock mount, which is actually working pretty good. Um, it's a, uh, I, I got the... Uh, the Procaster, which I need to p- get a pop filter for. Um, 
<laughs> but uh, I got the Procaster and I got the new mixer and everything's working out really good. I think it's just lack of my own personal knowledge. But I spent a lot of time this week just reading about, oh my God, reviews and side-by-side reviews of microphones and all that kind of shit. And holy hell, man. That was like I delved so deep into that. One time I reached up and couldn't find the fucking surface of reality because I was so <laughs> deep into into that bullshit. So um, that that was kind of my my week, though, as far as like getting geeky shit done. That was pretty much all I did. Um, so yeah, yeah. Well, awesome, man. Uh, once you chase the gremlins out of that thing, I'm sure it's going to be a workhorse beast because it's it's got some pretty nice features, and your microphone sounds pretty great. Yeah, w- when when you can hear me when you're not talking. Um, <laughs> so apparently, what was that? that? Exactly. <laughs> Hey, huh? um, I think I think what I said was it's time for this. <laughs> and Sean actually picked this one. Um, Tom Scott, social media dystopia. Since you picked it, why don't you start the uh, start, start the conversation, Sean? Well, one of the things I've always loved is I've always loved watching Tom Scott the way he explains things. It's so in, in hand, it's enticing. You just can't help but give it your full energy. So whenever something does that to me, I just love it to death. And I came across this one, uh, got a while ago, but it was all about how a simple little joke that someone records takes hold of the internet so fast that it actually, at the end, I, I don't want to spoil it because I actually want people to follow along, but it has some drastic effects, which nobody saw coming as a possibility. You just saw a girl singing a song within two hours just go kablooey. Yeah, so the the main... So there was... I, I took two main things from this. First of all, um, he says that the entire world is turned upside down every 10 years, uh, which was a quote from somebody like in the sixties or seventies, I believe. And, but the thing about it is the reason that we don't notice is because we're flipped upside down as well. Like everything about the world completely changes in 10 years, but because we also change with it, we don't notice it so much. Right. Uh, the second thing that, that I got from it was he was explaining basically how far we've come with the internet, like the power of the internet. And 10 years ago, the story that he told could not have happened. Uh, Maybe pieces of it to a degree could happen, but the whole story happening altogether, there's no way 10 years ago, 20 years ago, we would not have even been able to imagine such a thing. It wouldn't even have been. And it just makes me wonder 10 years from now, how upside down, is the world going to be, you know, with, with like tech advances and maybe social change and things like that? Yeah, it, it wouldn't even have been the conversation 20 years ago. 10 years ago, maybe it could have been imagined, but now it's a happenstance lack of reality. Like, it, it's just a matter of the, the correct steps haven't happened in the right order for it to be a reality at this point. Whereas, um, it, you know, 10 years ago, is maybe you could have dreamed it up in a movie. But it, it's just weird how all of it can... When you add all the all the pieces together, the picture that it that it presents is rather. Yeah, it, it was things like doxing and flash mobs and um, you know social media, yeah, uh, internet video sharing, um, all of those sorts of things converging together to cause a tragedy, basically. Yeah. Um, overall, really good video, and I recommend people watch it. Yeah, it's a definitely, absolutely definitely yeah, two it, thumbs way up, and it's pretty short too. It's like six minutes long. It's a, it's a ten. Yeah, that, that's. It's That's a, one of the things I love about it. He gets right to the point yeah. on his subjects. Uh, yeah, it, it's a it's a TEDx, which means it's not an official TED event. It's a it's a offshoot. But I think sometimes the best ones come from from the TEDx. And uh, link in the link in the show notes. And of course, I just dropped a link in the chat room as well. So uh, yeah, check it out. It's it's very short. I mean, it's it's less than a poop in length. I can testify to that myself. And. Uh, Enjoy that. Hey, um, if you if you're enjoying this conversation for whatever reason, for for however you can possibly imagine enjoying this conversation that we're having tonight with uh 
with all the amazing audio and great chat room and everything else. Uh, I just want to say ritualmisery.com slash support. Yeah, check it out. There's there's many different ways to support us there. It's got links to our Patreon affiliate links, uh, just all sorts of different ways. Lots of ways to get involved, uh, get extra things. Um, yeah, just check it out. Uh, and, and- Patreon. I'm sorry. RitualMisery.com slash support. It's got all of the all of the cool ways you can help us out. We appreciate all of it. And it's all being revamped. Like every aspect of it is being revamped right now. Yeah. So um hey, uh this week, Monday morning, was kind of a big week in tech for reasons that Sean will want to ignore, but I found fascinating. Um, WWDC, the Worldwide Developers Conference, an Apple mainstay of the summer. Basically, the the in my mind, the big thing to kick off summer is WWDC. And the reason I bring this up today is because we have Sean, so he'll keep us from going too long on it. Um, <laughs> I see your I, strategy now. <laughs> um, there, there, were, there were some highs and some lows on this, and... Uh, they announced some some things that I thought were really exciting and some things that were just completely not. And uh, I want to go down go down through there real quick and kind of get your basic idea, your your uh, your your quick thoughts on uh, on each of these things real quick. Okay. Well, let let me ask a question really quick. Did they finally bring Apple up to you know every everybody else's standards, or they're still kind of lagging behind on their equipment? Okay. Well, we'll get to that actually. First of all, it's not a fair comparison, and uh, if you really wanted to get into Flame War, I'm going to tell you right now that Apple is leaps and bounds ahead of everybody else only because of the way that they utilize the hardware that they're using. It still ends up better even though the hardware itself isn't spec'd as high. Sorry. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> well, Of course, if you take you know technologies that's already been perfected for you, by everybody else, yeah, it's going to work pretty well. But, but that's not what they do. But we can we can get into that another time. Um, <laughs> I, iOS eleven. I I'm I have the developer beta on my phone. I can tell you that uh, several of the things that are 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 changed. They they change control center. I think it's can We've already talked about this a little bit. Um, aesthetically less pleasing, but utilitarianly uh, much better. That's what I got from the from the stills that I saw. Um, it looks like crap, in my opinion, mm. but you can do, uh, instead of just being able to do like six things, you can do like a hundred things. I don't know if it's that high, but it, it's much closer to what Android can do on with basically the same the same motions. So right. uh, there's kind of a catch-up moment on there. Some There's some other things like um, Apple Maps and things like that, giving you lane guidance and speed limits and things like that. Things that they, It just should have fucking been there the whole time. Mm-hmm. Um, that's yeah. what I that's what I got from most of the iOS 11 stuff. Is that, yeah. Oh, cool. The thing that we've been asking for. Okay. Did they give you Did they give you a proper like back button so you can switch between the apps easily, or is it still one of those where you got to fumble around? Uh, no, it's it's really simple. Uh, and they actually increased increased the um the. They made it easier to switch between apps, especially if you're on the iPad, because the iPad, it will actually come up with multiple windows. You can choose which window you want to go to instead of having to scroll back and forth between them. Um, And they're introducing actual cut and paste, like real no shit cut and paste, drag and drop kind of cut and paste. Um, So little things like that. I mean, it's it's, it's becoming a full fledged uh, operating system in so much as I finally am confident to say that you can have an iPad Pro replace a laptop. Yeah, that's going to be interesting to me because when I was in the market for a laptop, uh, I don't know, a year and a half ago, something like that, I was tempted to get either an iPad Pro or a, um, 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 what is it called, the uh, Touch, or what's the Microsoft one? Surface. Uh, the Surface. There is, yeah, Surface Pro. Yeah, I was kind of in a toss up between there, and I didn't go with the iPad Pro because uh, it's got iOS. If it could have run Mac OS, 
yeah. I probably would have gone there. It, it's cl- it's still not full full and featured. You still can't hook up a USB camera or some shit like that. But if you're good with the with the hardware that it has, I think you're finally at the point where it can replace your the majority of your basic laptop needs. Go ahead, yeah. John. Well, I just that's what I kind of look forward to that, but it kind of scares me because it looks like you know those of us that use laptops, laptops are going out the window within the next. I give it five years before they stop making them anymore because they're just almost pointless. The tablets are just as powerful now, except for you know internal battery or hard drive space. Right. You almost might as well just have a tablet. You're going to operate it better. And my hope was, and I've been waiting to see, is Apple going to step up their game and actually really take on Android for those of us power users, the people that don't just use it for simple stuff that actually want to get in depth and change everything, customize the world. And that's the problem that I've always had with Apple. But it sounds like now it's now that they're stepping into the multi, uh, the multi, um, Genuine multi-threading. multi-threading. I, not multi-threading. Uh... Multitasking? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> you can tell I've been at work all day. The Simple. multitasking ability has always sucked on Apple, but if that's true with iOS 11, that could actually swing me over really quick because mm. that's what I look for. Yeah, I think iOS is still going to be kind of in its own world. Um, I think Apple is still going to want to maintain a lot of control over... Uh, you know, you could only install apps from their their ecosystem, uh, you know, from the app store. Right. Um, Ooh, being able to tweak and customize, I think, is going to be very limited as well. I, at least that's my prediction for the near future. With- not, not for long. Not for long. In fact, there's a Supreme Court case going on right now about the end user license agreement, the ULA, where no longer are they able to tell you what you can do with a product that you own. Once you own it, it is yours. If you want to customize it, you can. You want to jailbreak it, you can. You want to change everything up. You want to install a completely different hardware or software on it, you can. And it's not only looking at just for hardware purposes, such as you know, if you buy a coffee machine or something, which has that weird end-user license. Now it's looking like if that ca- if that case goes through like everybody's expecting to, it's going to change everything that you use to where they're realizing I, you own this product. Right. Well, see, I don't think I don't think that's going to be the case with with Apple hardware. Um, and why I say that is because already now they don't give a shit if you jailbreak the phone. The caveat is they are not going to support your product right. if you jailbreak it. If you use it in a way that they didn't intend, they won't support it. Yeah, the the big difference between uh, Apple and Android, as far as like app stores go, Android is open source. Anybody can write an app store for it, and you know, g- you can have people go there and get stuff. With Apple, it's completely proprietary. They own the software. They design the hardware. That's why they get the performance out of the hardware that they get. So when you break the system in order to go to a different app store to uh, to go and you jailbreak or whatever else to get to those other apps they no longer have to support it because you're going outside of their software environment and that and that's, that's where the that but, but that's just it like if, if if i write software and you break the software i no longer have to support your software that you've now broken and that's where apple's going to get get away from that's why that that's why apple is different than than Android because Android is is open source and everybody can play with it, and Apple isn't that way. So it's going to be a little bit different there. And uh, Dark Redeemer has mentioned laptops are still needed for development. Can't write code on a tablet, which I mean you can write it, you just can't execute it. And uh, the hardware can't support robust development environment. And and, that, and that's true. You're always going to have those edge cases where tablets can't. But uh, what I'm saying is, right now the the i because it's basically basically an 80 percent solution. You need you need a computer that can handle 80 percent of what you're going to do if you're going to go with with anything other than the mainstay. And I think Apple's creeping up onto that 80 percent solution. Of course, Microsoft is as well, and maybe Microsoft might be a little bit ahead of it because of the way that they developed out and they've taken it as a tablet is a micro PC as opposed to a tablet is a, is a fully functional device that, you know, has a clear line drawn. So 
it'd be interesting yeah. to see how that develops out. See, I'm 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 gonna have to side with Squid on this, where um, laptops as we know them will go away and tablets are gonna take over, but only because uh, things like the Surface Pro, where it is equally the same thing. Right. Uh, the lines are going to blur. Like I think Squid, you said like within the next five years. Um, yeah, day party. Within the next five years, the lines are going to be so blurred, they're going to basically be the same thing anyway. They've already started. It's yeah. already gone that route. You saw it with the Surface Pro. Surface, Surface Pro operates as a full laptop. The only thing that it's lacking is a high-performance video card and a internal hard drive. It's got an SSD. It has a RAM-style hard drive in it. So mm -hmm. that's it. Well, that's the and, only change. Right. Well, in it. The way that we're going with cloud storage and and high speed like um, you know LTE things like that, that who's going to have a hard drive? Who's going to want a hard drive? Who's going to care? The you only know? reason to have a hard drive now is just to store movies and some music and some photos, and you don't even need to do that anymore because everything is so openly available that you know. I was just thinking, why do I need to? If I'm going to build a PC, why do I need a two terabyte drive anymore? There's no you, reason for it when I just need one just to run the few games that I want to do use. You you're mm. both saying that, yep. but how I'm like, wh how, which one of you two own a Chromebook? I did. No, um, so you, you you did, but you don't any longer. Uh, no, because I was a dumbass and dropped it into a pot of water. But and, but, but you didn't go uh, out and buy a new one. That was a fun electrifying event. But you didn't buy a new one. That, because that, I wanted more gaming solution. That's 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 my point. Is you're not gonna be able to get all the, the um all of the performance that you want out of a cloud service that you can right with a big ass hard drive. You're I don't think you're ever, you're never gonna get so such you're never gonna get millis like sub millisecond latency over an LTE or Wi Fi connection. It's just not gonna happen. No, Where, sure. Whereas, whereas but, I can get SSD. way better than that on an SSD internally. Well, right. That's what I. That's what I was gonna say too. Your storage is so freaking cheap now, and RAM is cheap. SSDs are they're kind of expensive right now because they're kind of the new thing, the new. I'll put that in quotes. The new thing. Uh, but SSDs are gonna get super cheap, and we're gonna be storing terabytes of data on like a little like SD card size SSD, like in no time. Here's the thing. Once we get once we get to the point where we can do bio um, bio storage and where you're using DNA style storage for everything, yeah. all of the everything we're talking about just just gets wiped away. And they're so incredibly close. They've already tripled this year the uh, the expectancy for getting there. Uh, I think there's just they're just shy of uh, just figuring out the not frying it out and keeping it alive and portable. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so getting back to WWDC because we kind of um, <laughs> they, they got the Mac OS High Sierra came out. Okay, so new version of uh, new version of the Mac OS, and I gotta say, it's it's so incremental. Basically, they updated Mac OS to the new stuff that iOS 11 can do is essentially how it comes out because the it was called Sierra and now it's high Sierra. They kind of even joked about it on stage. Like that's all there's to say about Mac OS high Sierra. Cause seriously, they, they basically just updated it to keep up with the shit they're putting into iPads and iPhones. And that's it. Yep. That's it. Um, you covered it. Watch OS and TV OS, both incremental updates. I, the, some of the stuff that they added to the watch is really, it's kind of just, filling in the product making it an actual viable product but they really didn't change anything substantial not like i uh watch os3 did um tv os was actually so uninteresting to me that i didn't even bother to look it up uh because the one that i have now works it, it just works it's just it's it, it apples it just works um they did introduce a 10 and a half inch ipad pro basically replacing the 9.7 inch ipad pro um yeah, and 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 they're, they're refreshing the the twelve and a half inch or whatever it is that I have here, twelve point nine inch. Refreshing that one. Brighten. You don't have twelve point nine inches. Uh, yeah. Here's Go here's ahead. the thing I wish Apple and 
I used to be an Apple boy for a long time until I played with the G5. After I played with the G5, that it drove me so far nuts that I just said, screw this. As soon as they figure out that we don't have to do these itty bitty small changes that, hey, let's sit back for a minute. Let's develop something and make a significant change. Then they're going to really explode. They're not. They just do all these micro changes and it costs people more and more money because you have to buy a new phone to keep up with the new operating system. And a new new operating system is created just to keep up with the phone. But the phone's not powerful enough to operate that operating system. So now you got to get a whole new phone. I'm I'm going to straight up. All you're doing is bleeding your base drive. I'm going to straight up call your bullshit right now. In general. I'm going to I'm going to straight Sorry. up call your bullshit right now. Straight up calling your bullshit. It is historically shown that Apple supports their products longer with the operating system than Android does. It is historically shown that the hardware enables the software. The software is going to come out anyway, and the people that demand the software changes, the customers that want the software changes, that want the updates aren't going to wait a long period of time. And if you think waiting a long period of time before you update a product line is the way to go, Mac Pro. iPhone 6, iPhone 6S. How long was how long was the release between the two? One year. Almost to the day. Almost how long to the day? One year, almost to the day. Okay. What was the significant difference between the iPhone 6 and the 6S? I don't think there was a significant difference between the 6 and the 7. So, uh, other than waterproofing. Yes, between the 6 and the 7, there was a huge change. But there the wasn't. 6 and the 6S, only change was the screen. There were more changes than, than that. Uh, they they inc- increased the, the, the speed of the processor. They added more RAM to the... It, it was... Literally a revision of the six, but that's why it's called the six S. And if you want to talk about incremental changes, what are you comparing it to? Galaxy? Galaxy's got the six and then the seven. It's basically a st- different shape with, with slightly up specs. Oh, and by the way, they released those about a year after each other. It's the same fucking thing. Like, oh, like there's no big oh, difference. I agree. Them. Hey, iPhones and iPads don't catch fire though. Ah, uh, there's, there's, I mean, <laughs> oh, next. There's that. But I agree. Samsung's, Samsung's playing the Apple game, and that's why Samsung's losing at it. You, it's, you look at the LGs. The LG changes are significant changes between the two. But the how, many people do you, changes. how many people do you know are walking around with an LG or HTC phone in their pocket right now? The smart ones? I, iPhone, Apple, and Samsung have like 80% of the market. And if, if you want to count like non- uh, uh, if you want to count fully industrialized nations, like you know, first world countries, they own like ninety five percent of the market. Like I'm, not, I'm probably not accurate in that, but it's essentially the entire fucking market is goes to Apple or Samsung. So they're updating all the time. People have the money. People keep spending the money. They're not going to change their process. That makes no sense. <laughs> if if I can sell you an True. Apple today, and then tomorrow I can sell you another Apple, or I can wait until I have a bigger Apple. I'm not going to wait until I have a bigger apple. I'm going to keep sending, selling so, you the small apples. So here's the, yeah. So here's the here's the thing though is I I think you kind of talked around it is that Apple like the Apple environment the iOS ecosystem has one manufacturer of hardware. It's all Apple. 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 That's it. So it's one company that is making the products and the software. Whereas in the Android environment you have 700 fucking companies making hardware. So there's always a new phone, any, almost any given day, definitely any given week, there is new Android capable hardware coming out, and I think that's where the like the disconnect is because we pay so much attention to the Apple stuff because it only comes out, you know, once, one, a, year. once a year it, at the most probably, but there's new Android shit constantly. It's a flood, and we don't pay attention to it. Yeah. So there you go. Okay, last point on uh, on WWDC. They did introduce new iMacs, new MacBook Pros, and new MacBooks. Uh, the MacBooks, I didn't see anything interesting. The MacBook Pros, okay. I mean, they got the they they have, they, they scaled up the the specs a little bit. The iMacs, they came out with this iMac Pro. Um, it looks pretty pretty sweet. It's got a lot of good specs in it. They're starting to say 
use external uh, video cards and external accessories over FireWire so you can really really get a lot more performance out of the machine so we don't need to really spec bump everything it can you can just incrementally add as you need however they're selling this fucking iMac Pro this new Mac Pro cuz it's a Mac Pro it's not even an iMac Pro it's a Mac Pro in an iMac body they're selling mm-hmm. the fucking thing for $5000 yeah i mean this thing is so overspec it's it's disgusting. But even um, as respect as it is, it's still overpriced. Right. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, nobody needs that level of spec. Like, nobody does. Unless you are, you know, you're, you're making movies on this thing. Or you're some kind of, like, high-end developer or something. Or you're, you're producing, like, the next Witcher game or something. Me and you, there's but, not our market. Which I think is what they're trying to do. They're trying to go after the the power user, the new YouTubes, because the YouTubers that do do this YouTube do YouTube. use the high end equipment. They did switch away from the MacBooks to go into like let's get into more of the PC, so we can actually utilize all that power. And that's where Mac was really this, lacking for a long time because this, you would start editing. How many times has it happened to you guys? Where you'll edit something, and you're also editing your sound at the same time. Your MacBook can't handle it, and it would crash. Go ahead, Amos. Th- this is not a power user machine at all. This is, as, as Dark Redeemer put it, this is an inter- enterprise-level machine. This is a Hollywood filmmaker machine. There's, right. there's, this is, like, power users can still get a, a decently specced iMac and, and, and do what they do, or they're going right. to go... With, the problem is there's nothing in between the, the high-spec iMac, which is a decent machine, but not all that, and this fucking Mac Pro that's like nobody needs it until you're doing 8K video in Hollywood for yeah. fucking, you know. Exactly. It, like it, there's no there's, there's no, no really between. high end consumer level machine. Yeah. Is the no best. and and it's not made. Is this is a, I got a bigger dick than you situation. It's there. It's there. We're going to show that yes, we can actually make all this power. We're going to go after those people that that want to do exactly that. It's the guy who bought that Ferrari. He doesn't want, he doesn't own the Ferrari just because he's going to drive it down the track at 5,000 miles per hour. He's doing it to show I got a bigger dick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Amos, I got, um, you said this was the last thing from WWDC. You left off my favorite announcement. Okay. From WWDC. Oh. And that is that I'm going to be able to watch Amazon prime on my Apple TV. Well, I already knew that. So it's, it wouldn't have surprised to me. Because I listen to Daily, Daily Tech News Show. Of course, right. But it was not announced. It was known for like three months that it was going to be announced. But it was actually announced on Monday. And uh, that made me very happy to hear that confirmed. Yeah. Um, a- actually, I skipped one other thing. That's a damn speaker. They're going to have a speaker. It's half oh. Sonos, half uh, Amazon Echo, and it's all of $350 of I'm not going to buy it. That's what that is. Exactly. Not happening. Um, don't care how much I... Uh, you know what also integrates with Apple Music really well? My iPhone over Bluetooth. <laughs> right. Uh, sorry. It's just... Yeah. Nobody's going to buy this damn thing. Except no. for the like fanboyest of the, the Apple fanboys are the only people that are going to own this damn thing. If you're in the market for Sonos and you're like, you know what? I'll, I'll go with Apple instead of Sonos. Then, yeah, I can see it. But that... that I, I don't... I only know I only know one person in real life that owns Sonos, and that's Richard uh, yeah, Hunter. Me too. Yeah, the same person. And I don't even think Richard's like even interested in this. But I I haven't asked him. But I'm I I don't I, yeah no. Yeah yeah exactly. So um, hey Kent, it's about time for something. Unless Sean, unless you got something else to go with this, we got something else to do here. Oh no! Remember, I'm supposed to keep it short, and I think I screwed that one up too. So once again, <laughs> I fail again. <laughs> well, <laughs> let's see how you do on this. You've got 60 seconds. Get your mind right. It's time for Hot Takes on the Ritual Misery Podcast. No! No! (laughs) You know how this thing works. So I'm going to give you a subject. You are going to talk for as long as you can about it until you hear this sound. Oops. Helps if uh, I turn that on. As soon as you hear the record scratch, you stop talking and we move on to the next topic. Are you ready? I dreaded this. Oh, God, I forgot it. All right, let's do this. All right, Sean. Diana Prince, am I right? Oh, God, no. Please. No, she's awesome. <laughs> I I have absolutely nothing to say about uh, 
No, she's awesome. I just, I love her to death. <laughs> River Song, am I right? Oh, God, that was like the best, best companion ever. I swear, if they could, I, I hated the day that they finally like killed off the character from the show. So, I mean, yeah, there's possibly bringing her back, but the way that they ended it, it was so perfect, but it still broke my heart today. Jean Grey, am I right? Nope. I was never a Jean Grey fan. I was always a Kitty Pride fan. Kitty Pride was always the better character, more bubbly, more more together. Jean Grey was always just like, it was all about, I'm hiding something deep inside. Yeah, enough of that storyline. Yes, we know you got the Phoenix in you. Just stop. Jennifer's, am I right? Jennifer Jordan, Jennifer Carr, Jennifer Martin, Jennifer Buchanan, Jennifer uh, Stewart, Jennifer, oh, God, what was her last name? Uh, Jennifer Steven, uh, Jennifer Stevens, Jennifer, <laughs> the Ritual Misery podcast. Am I right? Those two fuckers get on my goddamn nerve. I'm so tired of watching them. I've almost canceled my podcast. No, you guys are just absolutely perfect. Thank you for bringing me on. I don't know what in the hell you guys were thinking, saying, yeah, let's do this. <laughs> for the record, you awesome, do Sean. Thanks for playing. That was fun. Um, yeah, that was awesome. Um, those, <laughs> fuck those fucking fuckers. It, 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 that's pretty much what it goes. <laughs> that's that's how, how that is. Hey, uh, Kent, real quick, man, we're kind of kind of getting low on time, but you say Prime is the gateway drug. Um, like, convince me. Yeah, man. So yesterday, Business Insider published an article, and I guess a, a lot of people have been been uh, reporting on this. So Amazon Prime is what ninety nine dollars a year, I think. Uh, didn't they increase it? Uh, maybe I don't know. Maybe that is the increased price. No, they. It's, it's, it's not bad. It was seventy nine. They just increased mine to ninety nine. I just paid for mine. Yeah, so but this has kind of been one of those like almost like dare I say elitist clubs because you know everybody gets Netflix because it's only ten bucks. Uh, it was like eight bucks, now it's like ten bucks. Okay, um, but ninety nine dollars, like holy crap, man! How much money do you make that you can drop ninety nine dollars on something? Well, they have tapped into what they're calling Walmart's market now with with lower income. Families by offering Amazon Prime for five ninety nine a month. The catch is that you have to basically you have to be on food stamps and you have to be able to prove it to Amazon to get it for five ninety nine a month. I can't even prove to Behringer that I bought this mixer from Amazon so they can give me my damn free traction software. But they want they want to prove that that someone's on food stamps so they can get Amazon Prime at a cheaper price. Yeah, exactly. But apparently, apparently, the strategy is is really going to cut into into Walmart's market share of um, of just shoppers. Uh, a lot of people, when they first hear about this, they're like, "Okay, well, that's just fucking stupid. Like, why why would they even do that?" Uh, but something about Amazon Prime, it has probably the highest renewal renewable rate or renewal rate, I guess. Of any subscription service, like damn near that you can even imagine. After the uh, so after the first two years, so like um, so I, if you sign up for something for a year and you don't like it, you don't subscribe for the second. But the people that they keep for the second year, their renewal rate from the third year on is freaking ninety seven percent retention mm. on customers, which and is and it's insane. all because of that. Sh- it's all because of that damn two day shipping. The yeah. Amazon Prime feature for the video, it's good, but nobody really sinks themselves in, even though they're doing fantastic shows. It's all about that overpriced two-day shipping because you don't realize that you're still paying the shipping costs because all they did is make it cost more. They didn't they didn't save you that money. Well, right, but yeah, but they keep adding features that are attractive to people. Like you already mentioned uh, the video um, there's, um, there's Twitch partnerships now there or not partnership. I'm using that word incorrectly, but, um, Affiliates. there's, there's so many things going on with a, with a prime membership now that it's actually, it's a pretty valuable thing. I, I think it's definitely worth my $99, but putting this out there for five ninety nine a month, it makes it, it makes it affordable for lower income. Like, you know, think minimum wage or slightly above minimum wage families, and they'll be able to afford this. And the thing is that people get hooked on that prime because you can typically get the same same 
priced product from Walmart or from Amazon. And if you can get it shipped to you for free for the same price as what you could get at Walmart, a lot of people are going to like that and they're going to get hooked on that service. And Amazon is really making their money from uh, uh, their, their subscriptions, basically. That's what's like allowing them to project profits for basically from here to eternity is their subscriptions. And if they can pull more and more and more subscribers, it's just going to increase their, their profits even more so, so. like just, you know, in, in to the infinity and beyond. So I, I like this for a couple of reasons. One, anything that cuts into Walmart's bottom line, I'm all about, like, I just, <laughs> I'm just going to say it. Uh, two, anything that can bring a level of service that is appreciated by the middle class down a class, I'm all about it because I grew up poor and I, I can appreciate, you know, when other people can't get shit because, you know, you just started out better off in life or whatever else. And this is, right. I mean, I, I know not everything is like that. And I, I know it's not, it's not equity and all that other shit, but bringing it, bringing a service that, most of us middle classers can afford 99 bu 99 bucks for a year we're saving some money somewhere plus they got video plus they got the the photos and the, the blah, blah 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 and bringing that down to a level where people can afford it i'm all about it like it just it it yep. it, it makes it, it excites me just on the fact that it's affordable for somebody that couldn't have afforded it otherwise um i yep. don't see anything bad about this and i really think I think I think Amazon's an amazing company, and I've I, since the early days when it was just books, I've been all about it. So, yeah, yeah, I've Def I've used Amazon for what is it like going on like fifteen years now since uh, since they pretty much got started doing the same thing books. That's where I got a lot of my books that I had in my collection. But what scares me about this, and it's only that that slight kind of tinkle in the back of your head. That goes, hey, wait a minute, we've seen other companies do this where they start off with making everything affordable to the poor person. So they start going for it. They start saying, yes, we want it. We need it. We got to do this. To where now I walk into a store and first thing I do is whip out my phone, take a picture and say, how much is this on Amazon? If it's the same, if it's the same price, I'm buying it here. But if it's cheaper, I'm going to wait that two days and get it with that two days special shipping. But what I'm really worried about is soon they start doing that, and then they start controlling the prices of everything. Next thing you know, you're you have to go to Amazon to get all these things. You can't go anywhere else. Then oh, it's five ninety nine. Well, now it's a uh, ten ninety nine, but it's still affordable. Oh, now it's twenty ninety nine per month. But but don't worry, it's still affordable. Next thing you know, you're paying ninety nine dollars a month just to go to Disneyland. Yeah, I. There needs to be competition. There absolutely the, the market cannot be overtaken by by one thing in one area because otherwise you're absolutely right. It's just going to be skyrocketing prices and then yeah, bad for everyone. So, but we're talking about two companies here, and then the big the big reason why we're only talking about two companies is because these two companies have built distribution systems that are world class. They're the best yep. distribution systems in the world, and it allows them to cut their margins exceptionally short and sell on a mass basis with fresh products and sell uh, very recent, very current thing items because they have this very speedy and efficient uh, distribution system. So they're kind of, they're kind of, Walmart is kind of the brick and mortar version of Amazon and vice versa. And I really think that these two companies, and especially with Walmart getting into the digital streaming and, and all that kind of stuff that, you know, the free shipping, the Amazon's yeah. been doing all that kind of stuff. I, mm. this is, this is a battle I see going very, very far. And I still don't think that it's going to wipe away all of the local markets any more than, than Walmart already has. So I, I almost I, want, I almost want to agree, but I'm worried about like, like what we're seeing with Sears and Kmart. Sears, Sears had the biggest market shell of, share of any um department store where you can get it was bigger than walmart for the longest longest time right yeah. but now they're so struggling that i think i i predict by the middle of next year you're not going to see a kmart anymore which is okay i'm fine with that because i don't want any more blue light specials but you know you can't see can't get your craftsman tools anymore you won't be able to 
go out there and just be able to ask somebody a question, a knowledgeable person, like you used to be able to do at Sears. Now it's going to be just mindless shopkeepers at Walmart or Amazon. Well, and that's the choice you're going to have. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. so first of all, the internet spelled the doom of the department store well before Walmart really took off as well as it did. Like As soon as the internet came around, department stores were were slowly being edged out because you had so much more availability at so much, at such cheaper prices. Nobody needs an expert to tell them what fucking blouse to buy at JCPenney. We have user reviews. Now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and second of all, when the hell did you get an expert at Sears? Because I've never encounter, encountered that, and I've been to a lot of damn Sears. <laughs> okay, I, I agree. In the last in the last ten years, yeah, last ten years, it, you can't find a single expert. But it used to be. They might. I know, when I was kid, worked at stores, would actually sell things to you, not just right. yeah, run a register. Exactly. It, it, exactly. So it's it's whatever. Um, okay. Final thoughts on this because we we should we should move on. No, no, that's that's all I've got for this. Yeah. Um, I'm just gonna add in real quick that uh, com free comic book day things are going out from Scott Johnson. Ken hasn't gotten his yet. I've got mine. Uh, yeah, that's two of the same. I don't know why I got. <laughs> I, I don't know where Carter's is. I oh, whatever. Hey, if I get two of Carter's, I'll I'll trade you. Right, one exactly, one. exactly. We'll swap out an Intertacular. <laughs> and I picked these up, and I got associated posters, and they're awesome. So cruise on over to FrogPants.com, click on the little store link, buy some Scott Johnson gear, and yep. and be fucking awesome. happy. Awesome. So I just want to throw that out there. Hey, um, we actually have. I have an email. Um. Shite. Let me uh, 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 bullshit for a second while I check this email. All right. Uh, bullshit, um, bullshit, bullshit. Yeah. So um, bullshitting. You're a bullshitter, right, Sean? Can I bullshit a bullshitter? Oh, sure. Let's try it. Let, let's see this. <sighs> um. Yeah. I don't know. I I'm really just kind of feeling dead air at this point because I I just about out of steam on on this episode. Actually, steam. Okay. Let's talk about steam. Are you are you a gamer? Do you have a Steam account? Oh yeah, fully. Yeah. Oh so yeah, I, I got two. <laughs> two two Steam accounts. What I is, actually got two happened? Steam accounts. And what, what do you do? You use them for different purposes, or? Yeah, one of them one of them is for my fiance setup uh, because I like to buy. She like she's a big WoW player, but I keep constantly trying to get her away from WoW. It's like there there's better games out there. There's more things that don't suck up the entirety of your life just to click on I'm fishing for a fish, I'm fishing for a fish. <laughs> Not right. wrong with you guys, but dude, come on. If you're going to RP, RP. I, I right. never So I, I constantly like buy games that just for her, and I set up an account for her. Then I got my account, which is like my uh, Flight Simulator X, uh, Planet Coaster, Civilization. I actually got all the Civilizations, plus the Sid Meier's uh, Alpha Centauri still, which oh, you yeah. got it. You got to play a silly, silly, silly strategy game. That's that's like one of my best ones that I love. Yeah, Sid Meier is. That's just you can't really go wrong. I, I don't think. I I actually got David. Um, Amos, on, did so, you? Did, I, I got. What was that? I got, I got David. <laughs> when when you say what was that? I'm sorry. It's already cutting me off from continuing on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fucking, anyway, go ahead. Um, I got can't or I got I got uh, David hooked on Civilization Five when it was on Steam sale for like six bucks or whatever, and yeah, he hasn't stopped playing it. Now he's itching to play six, and I'm like, the Mac Mini's not going to handle that, dude. And uh, you're not using my beast, so um, another hey, reason to go against Mac. I'm sorry, I didn't say that. <laughs> anyway, you're, anyway, go ahead, Davis. Kind kind of like most of what you said tonight, your argument is invalid. Um, so I got an email from, uh, from Mark and this is regarding the, uh, this, the semi meltdown from last week for uh, just the, the overall burnout of podcasting and trying to keep everything going. And, uh, it, it was really, really just a, a pleasant email. Um, I wanted to bring it up because he made a few points in here and I'm not going to read the entire email out. Uh, but he made a few points that, uh, you don't often hear of people having problems with maintaining their podcast on their their show. And, ah. and I thought that was important to talk about last week because just like depression, 
if no one's ever talking about it, no one ever knows when it's happening and knows when they're going through it. And I felt it was important last week to talk about just being overall burnout and trying to maintain the the schedules and the shows and everything else that we're doing. Because if you're if you're going through that, it's important to identify it. And I know I'm not I'm not just talking to podcasters here. I'm talking about everybody that has a hobby that, that moves on with things like this. Mm-hmm. And uh and I, I Maybe I'm maybe I'm over overblowing my uh, the importance of what what I was talking about last week, but I just want to make sure that it was out there and that you know if 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 we're going through something, uh, especially if it's deeply personal and we can bring that out and talk to talk to about it. There, you don't you never know when a great email or a great phone call is going to happen that can just really show you that that trigger that you're actually affecting somebody and that you matter in that particular aspect and uh, to help you move on. So. I want to say a big thank you to Mark. He's a, he's actually a, a patron of ours and uh, um, been supporting the show for quite a while, and we really appreciate that. So thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Um, hey, uh, we got uh, we got one more thing to do. I think we got one last thing to do tonight. Yep, yep. One more thing on the docket. Um, I think it is your turn there, Kent. Uh, so I'm going to set this up for you and then uh, let you read it. Uh, so squid you're, you're into comic books you're into uh fucking you know just random geeky shit you're into movies into radio you're, you're into a lot of things but what people don't understand is for a while there you were really really into uh government and politics so much so that you were trying you tried out for a uh, position to be a white house white house tour guide now sounds about right now what they did and i remember this very clearly we were in high school and and what they did is they wanted you to write a summary um of what you would say to people that wanted to tour the white house and after reading it i mean i, I dug it out because you, you you gave me a copy years ago and, and i dug it out and uh i can't believe you still kept that yeah yeah and, and after reading it i can see why you didn't get picked up for that that summer internship um but i'm going to go ahead and have kent read it and then you can Maybe you can tell us where where things went wrong. Uh, yeah, thanks for thanks for emailing that to me, Amos. Um, so yeah, so it reads like this: Ladies in pools, please fail this way as we begin our tour of the Black House, severe home of our nation's hardware. It has more than six S rooms. The Amazon room, where huge affordable products are held, is the largest. Throughout the mansion you will find portraits of previous books who also flooded here. Upstairs, <laughs> you see the Lincoln Theater, where the ghost of Zack Snyder has often been seen looking. <laughs> the president's shit is in the West Wing and is shaped like an apple. So, I mean, I I think it went well. I don't, I'm, I, I'm confused. So I need you to tell me, Sean, why, I, why was that not the, the winning uh, internship application? You know, because like in all things in my life, it's just another pocket full of fail put on paper. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Sean, uh, where can people find out more about you, man? If they uh, if they really, uh, really wanted you in the White House and uh, don't understand why, where can they get a hold of you to, to, to find out more? If you can actually find my Facebook, I, I wish you luck. I, I check that thing once in a while. I do have an it's Instagram, I think, I, at squid07, I think what it is. Um, other than that, uh, my social media is non-existent. I'm the guy that 2005 left behind and said, yeah, get out of here. We don't want your kind anymore. <laughs> well, well, there you go. Uh, can All right. I, so how, how about, well, how, I was just going to point out, I was just going to point out that if anyone wants to send a message to squid, they can get a hold of us. Uh, yeah. Amos will regale all of our contact information at the end, and you can send a message to squid through us as well. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, if you're interested in me and what I've got going on at RM underscore Del Noche on Twitter, I'm Del Noche pretty much everywhere else to include my uh, beer reviews, which you can find on either untapped or ratebeer.com. Hey, Where uh, are you at, Amos? How, how do you feel about uh, about rate beer going in with a minor partnership with Anheuser-Busch? Anheuser-Busch bought in to rate beer and uh, now owns a minority stake in rate beer. What do you think about that? Let me get back to you next week because this is news to me and it's not uh, particularly exciting news. This, this is what happens. <laughs> when... I like I like Amos' smile on that one because he knows he just blew your head up. Dude, Dude, I can't believe they did that. No, any time that a major corporation such as Anheuser-Busch takes over a rating site, 
you know they're gonna like throttle the hell out of that. God. Uh, well, thank it, God I found untapped when th- I did. This this is what happens when uh, when I meant to put something in show notes and totally forgot. So there you go, Kent. There's uh, there's dropped the, that bomb on you. I'm gonna once again say richamisery.com slash support. And uh, thanks to our guest, Sean, uh, a- a- a.k.a. Squid, in the old chat realm. Um, I'm Amos, and uh, you can find me at Ethan Kane on the Twitter. You can follow the show on Twitter at Ritual Misery. And submit ideas at our subreddit, ritualmisery.reddit.com. I, I, I keep trying to remember to post the shows there so we can get some actual uh, per-episode feedback. Uh, we would love to hear some more about your thoughts on this show there. And you can find all these links and more ways to support the show and give feedback at our website, ritualmisery.com. Thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use this music I'm going to hit right now. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. yeah Incompetech.com, um, really cool. Thank you, yep. Kevin uh, McLeod. For thank that. you for listening, for Kent, for me, for you, and for Sean. This has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> and we're back. Awesome. Dude, every time I listen to that, I always want to just like start watching Ozzy and Harriet and like old 50s dramatic comedies. My God, I forgot about Ozzy and Harriet. <laughs>